Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Saving Data in iOS video tutorial series. In this video tutorial, we'll dive into SQLite. SQLite is a small embeddable database that you can add to your apps. So far, you've learned of many different ways that you can save data in this series. But if you have a SQL background, you may have fe felt a bit left out. SQLite will make you feel right at home. SQLite contains the features of a professional database without increasing the memory footprint of your app, or at least not too much. SQLite is an ACID compliant database that implements most of the SQL standard. If your SQL code will run in one database, then chances are it will run on SQLite. Mind you, I'm not talking about specific vendor dialects of SQL. The entire database is stored in a single file and the database itself runs in the same process as your app. Meaning when a user closes your app, he or she closes the database as well. Unfortunately, there is some bad news. SQLite is accessed using a C API. Thankfully, we can access this API in Swift, but it takes a little configura configuring in the app itself. The API itself is a little bit clunky. The most important thing to keep in mind when working with SQLite is its type system. It uses what it calls storage classes to represent the different types. These types are null, integer, real, text, and blob. Columns can prefer to use a storage class over another. This is called type affinity, and it's a different way of thinking about your types. You could define a column to be a Boolean value, but the storage class will be an integer. Oftentimes, it's just easier using text. In this demo, I'm going to show you how you can integrate SQLite into your application. And unfortunately, we can't do this using Playgrounds. So I've created a new project to work with SQLite. The first thing we need to do is actually add SQLite to our project. I'm going to select our SQLite project here. And under Build Phases, I'm going to open up Link Binary with Libraries. I'm going to click this plus sign and just type SQLite like so. Here's the SQLite framework, and I'm going to add that. Unfortunately, that's not enough. We have to create a bridging header to work with SQLite and Swift. To do this, I'm going to click File, New, then File again. And under iOS and Source, I'm going to select Objective-C file like so. And the name doesn't really matter. I'll just call this SQLite. And then I'll click Next. It's going to ask me now to create an Objective-C bridging header. And this is so I can work with Objective-C code in my Swift files. I'm going to click the button Create Bridging Header like so. Now you can see we have two files created. We have the SQLite file and we have the bridging header. I'm going to select the SQLite file and I'm just going to delete it since I won't be using it. Next in the bridging header, I'm going to import SQLite. To do this, I'll just type pound import and then SQLite3.h like so. I'll build and run. And now I have access to SQLite. I'm going to be doing all my work within view did load. I'll just clear out this code here. And the first thing I need is a reference to my file manager. Next, I need to create a reference to my SQLite database. Now, the thing to keep in mind is SQLite is a C-based API. And a reference to that database is actually a, a C pointer. In Swift, to reference a C pointer, we use a type called C opaque pointer. And we're just going to initialize it to nil for now. And finally, I'm going to have a, my database URL. The first thing I need to do is initialize my database URL, and I'm going to do this within a do catch block. Here we've initialized our Swift database URL. In this case, we're calling it swift.sqlite. Now we can start working with SQLite. First, I'm going to check if URL directory actually returned me a workable directory. And now I'm going to open up my SQLite database. I'm going to create a variable that's going to hold a few flags for me. And the first flag is open create. And the second flag is open read write. These are going to be passed into the open function. If the database doesn't exist, this function will create it. Otherwise, it will open it up in a read write mode. 
Now I'm going to open up my database. I'm going to call SQLite 3, and the method is open v2. There's also an open 16 and an open. The v2 is the latest version of this API, which is why we're using it. First, we pass in our database URL, but since this is a C-based API, it requires a C string. To get a C string, we first convert our URL to an absolute string, and then convert that to a C string using encoding. And for encoding, we just use an NSUTF-8 string encoding. Next, we pass in a reference to our SQLite database. And since SQLite is going to reference this and populate it, we have to put an ampersand in front of it. Now we pass in our flags, and finally we can pass in nil for the last argument. This function returns a status code, and we can check to see if the status code worked by doing an equals check on SQLite OK. Now we're going to create a table. Tables will return an error message in case something has gone wrong, so we need to create an error, error message. And this is going to be a type of unsafe mutable pointer. An unsafe mutable pointer uses generics as you can see here. Next, I'm going to write my SQL statement. All this statement does is create a new table called tutorials, and it gives it several columns. The first one is the ID column, and this is simply an integer primary key that auto increments every time a row is added to that table. Next, it provides a title for the tutorial, an author name, and then a publication date. To execute this, I simply call the function SQLite3Execute. First, I pass in a reference to my SQLite database, and then my SQL statement. Since I'm not using a callback, I'll pass in nil for that, and I'll pass in nil for this argument as well, and then finally my error message. Like the open function, this will return a status code, and we can check again against SQLite OK. And if it's OK, we'll just simply write create a table. Now I'm going to insert a record into this table, and to do this, I'm going to use a prepared statement. A prepared statement is a type of C opaque pointer. Now I'm going to write my insert statement. Now that I've written my insert statement, I first have to prepare it. To do this, I'm going to call SQLite3, and then I'm going to call prepare v2. This takes a pointer. And the pointer I'm going to pass in is my SQLite database. Next, I'm going to pass in the insert statement. This end byte takes a negative one. And next, I'm going to pass in my prepared statement like so. And since SQLite is going to populate this, I need to put an ampersand in front of it. For the last argument, you can put nil. Once this has been completed, I can call SQLite 3 and then the statement step. And then I'll pass in my statement, and this will run my prepared statement. And again, we can check, but this time we'll check on SQLite done. Once you have finished working with your prepared statement, you have to destroy it. Otherwise, you'll have a memory leak in your application. To do this, you simply call SQLite 3 finalize. And then you pass in your prepared statement. At this point, you may want to select some of the rows that is inside your database. We're going to create a select statement to do this. And this is also going to be a C opaque pointer. The select SQL is going to be very simple. It's just going to select all from the tutorials. Now I'm going to call the prepare statement on this SQL statement. Again, we're going to pass in our database then our statement, then our SQL, followed by a negative one, and then our select statement like so. At this point, now we can iterate through our rows using SQLite 3 step. Now I can get the data from my rows. 
As you can see, I'm calling SQLite3Column, and these are the various types of data I can get from it. The first one is an int, so we're going to call SQLite3Column int, and then we're going to pass in the select statement, followed by a zero, meaning the first column. Next is the title, and this time we're going to use SQLite3Column, and then we're going to use text, and this takes a one. Again, since we're working with the C API, I need to cast this to an unsafe pointer of type CCAR. And I'm going to do the same for author and date. Now I must convert the title, author, and date to a regular Swift string. And I can do this by simply calling string from C string like so. These will return optionals, and what I'm doing is just simply unwrapping them. In a typical application, you would check to see if there was any data returned. And now we can print this out. Now this will print out every column of that row. And of course, once we're done working with the prepared statement, we have to finalize it. Now let's build and run. And here you can see we created the table, we inserted it, and then we printed out the row. Intro to SQLite, Ray Winderlich with the date and time. That's it for this video tutorial, but as always, we like to leave off with a challenge. In your challenge, you're going to create a simple old-time radio database, save some shows, and then read them back using nothing but SQLite. The challenge document will walk you through this process. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.